and they'll be taking us through the first of our sessions on Japanese sword fiddle. So please welcome Phil. <laughs> Okay, we'll do a, we're going to take you slowly backwards in time. We'll start with a little bit of something to give you a general idea of some flavour, and then we'll take you backwards. Because our stool is something like an onion skin. You could peel off the layers and you go backwards. So this is an unusual form, and I'll tell you the significance of it afterwards. That's Akuma Barai, or demon cutting. In Japanese folklore, the demons, live in, the malignant influences, live in the corners of the room. So you cut at them to scare them away. Uh, so you, do, you, you would do it as, a, as a, a room cleansing thing. That's a good thing to do at the start of a demonstration. More importantly, if you cut at them timidly, they don't go. So you have to cut at them with power, with, with strength of personality. And the malignant influences, of course, are your own fears. So if you just timidly hack away your own fears, nothing ever is going to happen. But if you take a, a resolved mindset to it, and doing a form like that, get it, creating that, res that resolved mindset is something which is useful in everyday life. So to give you a, to, as a start off, we're going to do Nanahonga no Kata, which is the Stephen Kata, which is a series of two-person forms. Those four guys are going to do it. And we're going to have to modify it a little bit because of the low ceiling. So normally we would really do nice, big, bold cuts. But if we do that, we're going to make some ceiling damage. So I think it might be a little bit timid for these ones. We might go a little bit slower than usual just to make sure that things are going to be safe. And also we'll be <coughs> keeping these more bent. Let's in your kid. Yes. 
Can I dash? Okay. Things are not what they seem. Uh, I'll just talk a little bit about this before we carry on because you need to understand that once upon a time this was this was top grade military technology and you didn't want to let anybody else know what it was about. You wanted to keep it secret. So if somebody from outside the clan happened to see a training session, it was set up so that no one would ever know what was really going on. So for example, can I borrow you two guys? If you're doing um, in, in sideways, if you're doing uh, uh, some yoking, I'll, I'll ask you to stop in a second too. So, this, this, um, it doesn't matter. Um, This is not two swords patching together. This is this has been artificially changed. So what it really means is this. It's a chance to practice shift cuts with focus and power. And then the next one. And again the same thing. We have an artificial distance for safety. The third one. Yeah, as soon as we go back into that one slow motion, as she raises her sword to cut again, at the same time. And it comes in and cuts, and she has to cut her extra distance because anybody who works with swords knows that distancing is actually crucial. You're out of range, you're out of range, it's not going to work. So she has to cover extra, an extra bit to get across there. In the process of training it, you focus your sword skills. It's not saying that these are actually um, real fighting techniques. But inside there, there are fighting techniques. But the fighting techniques only happen when we change the color. So, for example, the fighting techniques from Zetsu Nyoke. Um, shut up. And I'm going to change you on you, Gary. I have to tell on that because these are oaken Japanese oak swords and they are, they're not pretend weapons. They are weapons. They're every bit as lethal as a sword. And, you know, a full power strike someone's head is going to kill someone. So, even though they're not sharp, and, and, and this doesn't go to do anything to you, you still have to take extreme care. So they, they kind of looks like you're playing with wooden swords, but you know, these are some samurai preferred fighting with wooden swords, because they're being one piece construction, they're, they're more stable over the long term. So, I'm going to change on you. Yeah. Uh, which touch? Yay! I treat it. Yeah, that's the fighting technique with inside. Or something like that. Yeah? That's the that's how there's inside the fighting inside the carta there are fighting techniques. We'll do a uh, caution launch. This one is kind of obvious. Yay! Yep! Now this again is the, the false the false distance. What it really means is this. And even that's a safety measure because what it really means is that. And that would be just too dangerous. The slice across the eyes. But from that position here, crossed, and again it's, it's artificially generated so we can learn it, so we can do the technique. Here. 
Uh, I've got the, this is the checkmate position. It's like, do you want to fight? No, not really. But what you don't notice is where my knee is. So if this all fails, uh, I've got that. And other, other variations on this technique? He goes, my sword. Oh, no, what are we going to do? I'm not going to let my sword create the problem. He's wearing two swords. Take his other sword. This is happening today. So, there's uh, levels within levels within levels. The kata actually work to train you. They encode fighting techniques, but the actual fighting techniques are not obvious. It's all levels within levels. Now we're going to start the onion skin. The outer layer of the onion, if you're in Japan, uh, this is worth while putting up. The 17th headmaster, our style started in 1590, Circa. The 17th headmaster, who was alive around about 100 years ago, decided that the world was changing and that the old system of successor, um, pupil successor, pupil successor, had to change. Because normally there would only be one headmaster following each one. One generation. Each, one, each generation would have one headmaster. He decided the world was changing and that what he would now do was he would institute the policy that anybody who was qualified would be a licensed teacher. The old one person system had to go. What this has meant is that the style we do, also addicted in Asian Yu, is the widest spread style in Japan, but it's also fragmented totally. So, although there's, the, the kata that you're going to see now are actually probably the most widely done kata in terms of traditional swordsmanship in Japan, they, uh, there, there are a lot of groups who are doing them slightly differently. And our group has got a particular way of doing it. Um, we have students of Sekiguchi Kobe Sensei, who's uh, one of Japan's top swordsmen, but Japan's full of top swordsmen. And lots of them have got students in there. A lot of them do this style with their own little differences. So, if you go to Japan, in most schools, you'll, you'll do this one for years, this set. You'll just won't, you won't go past this set. Our style, Sekuchi Sensei, because most of his students are outside Japan, tends to teach on a sort of long-term homework basis, so he'll give you a whole lot of stuff, like the whole style, and then he'll come back a year later and check on how you're doing. So, we tend to do the, a bigger range than most other schools. So, this set is the, okay, is the, the start, the, the, what you would see first of all. If you notice, just, just go Gary Link the way through. You could miss two, three, and four. And, and, um, uh, Kaisha. Yeah. So just, just one, five. And I'll talk, just ignore my talk. Yeah, you think you'll need to come further before we go. Somebody else could be back up to the side. Yeah. Make sure you've got enough room on your right. Just stagger it, stagger the wall. Yeah, if you need to go further forward. Yeah, just go to the front, make the front on, on the angle. The front of the wall. Yeah. I'll say. Uh, maybe for the sake of room, you might want to miss, miss um, Yagi. Yes. If I may, Mike. This is a preparatory form. There are no fighting techniques in this form, in, in this set. This set is about body structure, about sword handling, um, all the fundamentals that you need. It's got a lot to do with the way your torso works. It's very grand, it's very big, it fosters a big spirit. Next one will be Okanagashi. 
These guys are training with this wooden swords, and those who have got metal blades, they're, they're in training blade. They're not actually sharp. We do use sharp swords um, at times. Gary and I both got some kit. However, even if, even the, the the reason we use the element in training blades is that if we go to Japan for training, if you take a shinken and they will confiscate it. Whereas the training blade, they'll stick a magnet on it to decide that, oh yes, it's not a real sword, so you can bring it in. Yeah. Distance is going to be an issue, so it is slower than normal. Skekage. Uh, Skekome. Our style is particularly known for use of extra large blades because the, um, the the founder of our branch at the start was the grandson of the last daimyo of the Toza region who being a nobility or being a, a son of a daimyo had the permission to use an extra long sword. Again, short steps. So this this set dates from um, late 1600s, and it is a. Um, it's a it's now it's a preparatory set. It was a style in itself. The and there's a long story about its about its uh, about its development. But it was basically formally incorporated into our school only 100 years ago. If we go back further, back to the early 1600s, we have this the the personal style of the seventh head master, which really reshaped the form. The original style was based on tachi, which is a, a cavalry sword, which was worn this way. And post 1600, uh, there were no more cavalry battles, and so he, the seventh head master, turned to using katana. Katana is not a battlefield weapon; it's a personal self-defense weapon. The battlefield weapon is, like I say, tachi, which is worn for a fight, for riding on a horse. It's a thinner blade, shorter handle. It's made for cutting people down um, from horseback. Katana has got a fatter blade. It's made for going upwards in the sash. For walking around, it's what, it's what every samurai would expect to have two swords and would um, walk around with. Uh, and this is a this is personal self defense from the early 1600s. So we start with the first three. to the mezzan.
actually have enough room. Yeah, again, short because it's quite a long form. So we're Okay, so as you can see, they actually managed to do that, but that's set in remarkably well for in the confined space. It's a confined space uh, style set. How do you get personal self-defense out of that? If you go to Japan and you, you spend all your time learning shorthand, and then eventually you get onto this, and you spend ages and ages and ages learning this, eventually somebody might actually give you some of the clues as to how it actually works, because you would never know. And again, it's set up secretively because it was set up so that no one would be able to watch the forms and copy them. There's also a set of poems for this set, which is which helps to unlock a few doors as well. Um, uh, so um, number three is the, the poem is the, the technique is called inazuma, which means lightning, and the poem is. Both of them see the lightning, but only one hears the thunder. And this part goes on to demonstrate that the technique is solid. So it's it's pretty impenetrable from there. What you see is a downward cut and another cut. Two so a lot of people will say to the poem, oh, both of them here, you know, one, the first one's the lightning, the second one's the thunder. But we can take that a bit further. The first clue is, is that the, the two-handed strike, the two-handed cut, is not actually necessarily part of the fighting business. It's all in that first little that first glimpse. This is really about that initial moment, because once you stab somebody in the eye, the fight's, you know, you can cut them in half at your leisure. <laughs> so, if we're, we're two samurai sitting down and I decide that for whatever reason things are going bad and that he has to die, <laughs> I've won. At this point, I've won. My sword's in a better position than his. So as, but whatever, whatever, as he draws, I'm going to be a fraction ahead. You saw the smash with the butt and then the cut. And now at my leisure, I can finish off. No problem. That's how the form works. Now, going back, we'll do that again slowly. So, we both see the lightning that this is happening. But only I'm going to hear the thunder because it's going to be that's that's this is the distinction. So in training this, I'm doing this solo, but I'm imagining the other person in front of me. I need to get that idea that they're there, and then get the cut. Okay, next one. Uh, a lot of Japanese self-defense. It's not actually self-defense, it's defending somebody else. It's defending your, your boss, your daimyo. So let's have, can we get uh, three people? How many people do we need? Gary, you can, you can be the, the doer. So uh, Alex, Zandra, Gary, Cameron, nice and close together. So this scenario, uh, some of these scenarios are actually ridiculously complex, and there are often multiple versions of what they can could possibly mean. It doesn't really, really matter. But Zandra has got malicious thoughts about somebody over here. Gary needs to do something about it because he's tweaked that she's been malicious. So he's going to stand up and not. Cameron's innocent. He's got nothing to do with it, so he gets knocked away. He has to go around Alex. 
and then come back and knock Alex down to make sure she's out of the road before she can before he can cut the cut the zone. So you can think of it as being as being getting just the right person. Um, it's also quite accurate. Thank you. It means um, floating cloud because the position that you get to. Put it in this sort of thing up. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll say I'll say there. You just keep on going. I'll say there. There. It's actually a really, really difficult form to do. If you can get that form down, your legs are doing wonders. Your legs, are, your legs are being able to be controlled, so that you get control of your legs, so that you can then apply that in a randomised situation. Borosh, Borosh. This style, this set is based on Yuji's set. So it's not just about uh, sword fighting; it's about empty hand fighting. Oh, focus, speak, motion, speak, focus. One of the good things, one of the things you can do uh, if you've got people wearing swords is you can grab the other person's sword. So as he reaches to grab my sword, I will come up and break his wrist. Right? Possibly, like in there, it looks like a strike to his face. Cool. Broken wrist. Then I can cut, cut, and then I don't know what branch to cut. So there's a lot of jujitsu. Um, Samurai, if you're using a sword all the time, you get used to the sword grip, which is different to the western grip, because we're using these two fingers, and we've got a constant cutting motion. Yeah? And that's going to build up the muscles here, it's going to make our grip into a certain sort of way. So, uh, if, you, if you're punching offline, and the, sword, the same sword grip, there, which is, as you'll see, it's in Aikido as well. It's like a sword cut, except there's wrists in the road. It's very, very painful. Or, um, the other way, comes the front. Take it off. Is there another, there are, there are all kinds of levels of hints as to what a form can mean. Um, you two guys, for a second. Do you want to demonstrate Takatosh? Yes, you're going to be the you're going to be the defender. The useful technique. Show, show what the technique she's doing. She's going to grab his, his sword, but let, let, him do the, let him do the offensive technique, and lift it up. And up can't be. Yes. Either thrown or even just pushed down to the hilts in the ground, she can't draw her sword. <coughs> so this is a defense against that. If you look in the documents of some jiu-jitsu schools, you'll find that technique. So the defense against that is up. You come, you're coming up, son. And she's going to go backwards. Yes, yeah, striking backwards, striking upwards, so softly. Now, waterfall is the name of the technique. Zandra takes a step forward. We're assuming that this is going to go upwards. Zandra's going to ruin her nice scabbard. The blade will come out. Alex is going to ruin her nice scabbard. The blade will come out through the scabbard, wrecking her scabbard. It will go into Zandra's bladder, creating a waterfall. <laughs> <laughs> but the thing is, is that actually, you notice how I had to adjust their distancing. The distancing is not quite right. Because now, if you, if you go to the next bit, Alex has come a long way forward so that she can be in the right position. But you notice when we do the form, um, just do the form solo. Watch her right hand.
samurai walk, two swords. What's the right hand doing here? It's as she's coming up, it's doing that. So it's actually a short sword technique, implying that actually a short sword might be the one that you would use rather than the long sword. Okay. Actually, one, two, three, four, so, first, first layer of the Asian skin was the preparatory set, the second layer is self-defense. The original style, the core style of the heart, is the Okaden layer. Okaden means secret level. And very much in Okaden things are not what they, what, not what they seem. Uh, the founder of the style was a young man whose father had been killed by uh, an opposing warlord, and he wanted to commit he wanted to get revenge. But he was a young guy. And the other guy was a, a daimyo. He had, a, he had bodyguards and stuff like that. So how was he ever going to get revenge on this guy who's a daimyo? And he went away and, according to myth or legend, meditated at a particular shrine in Yamagata uh, for 100 days and then received enlightenment on how to do it. Um, went away, killed his father, killed his, avenged his father's death, father's death, and then used his enlightenment to create this style. So this style is built on assassination. Um, we'll do, uh, uh, we'll do, I'll, I'll do yeah, just this, this first few rules. We'll do it slightly on the other So much. Um, sorry, sorry, gosh, Gary, Gary and Alex just do it by yourselves for the sake of room. My boys, um, <laughs> okay, so it's, uh, we'll do some. You can be the doer, and, and Alex and Gary can be the so you, you can be the come back with me in line. And, um, and, um, so this one, the cat name of this one, now Gary, you're going to be the one of the, one of the, the name of this one means companions. So uh, this is what you do to your friends. You take one step, another step, and these guys take a step, but, but Zandra does not take a step. So now they're in a, th these guys are in a rather bad alignment, that's why she cuts to Alex. Gary realizes something bad is going on, so he turns around and draws. But let's just do that again, look at the timing bit there.
So you hardly see that block in the, in the received form. So the official form is... So, as I said, it's, 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 it would be a case of I've inveigled myself into, these, into, in, into the company of these people. I want to kill that person, but I don't want to die as well, so I'll kill that person and then escape with, with the other one. Um, if you guys are all over there, except for Gary, Gary can do this one. Yeah, you're all over there. Okay, come, come a bit closer, come a bit closer. And Zara, you can be the recipient. She's the target. So you, you, you guys are surrounding, surrounding her. No, 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 no you're, you're surrounding her from the front. No. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, come. Yeah, it's okay. Yeah, sorry, sorry. Sorry, sorry. Yeah, it's okay. So, the meaning of this one, Gary's going to come through there. And he's going to draw his sword and push these guys out of the way. You can be a bit closer. Yes. Push them out of the way because he only is interested in Sandra. And because, uh, because, because he's a samurai, he doesn't really care about himself in this case. It's just a case of getting that person. Last one we did, uh, it's an ugly. Um, in this situation, this is the kind of thing that you might be called upon to use a sword for if you're a young samurai, as, you're, as you grow up. There could be a case of someone who has done something so nasty that they are not allowed to commit suicide. Because it, we even have in the style, we have methods to, we have how to help someone commit suicide. But in this situation, this is um, what's called joich, which is orders from above. Um, so I've come to visit Gary. Gary knows why I've come to visit him. He knows I've come to kill him. He might have embezzled money. He's done something really, really low. That's not something honourable. He can't go with an honourable death. And there are three versions of this form, depending on how suspicious he is. But the idea is I have to sit here and I have to kill him. And the third one uses a bowing reflex. Very simply. The thing is, is that um, even today, I've, I've caught my teacher bowing to the TV. Uh, he'll, the evening news. They, they, the, uh, the evening news reader finishes reading the news and they bow in Japan and all the old people bow back because it's a, it's a, it's a reflex habit, so when he bows, you bow. That's the nature of that, exploiting that reflex in this technique. Um, so that's the opportunity. Let's go on to... How many, how many of you guys know the first part of of uh, Sumaya. You four? Yeah. Okay, okay. You, you four. Very yeah, very lovely. Okay. Well, we don't see the part of it. Yeah. Okay, so you, you, you two guys are uh, Zandra and Alex in front, and Cameron and Gary in the back. Skip this, we'll skip this. We've done, we've done, we've done a lot of stuff anyway. I'll put my sword back. The two person forms. Uh, maybe I'll use Sandra because it's um, because because of height. We're carrying the tall guy with a big sword. Um, uh, 
Some of those sort of slowly. So if I'm the attacker, I'm, it's not an attacker, I'm the teacher. It's the role of the teacher and the student. The teacher dies, usually. So going through it slowly, I take a step, and we both begin to draw. We take another step. She's expecting a step that we're both going to cut together. So she cuts, and I don't cut. She cuts first. And I don't cut, and so she thinks, right, since I've missed that, she's going to, aim, she's going to cut to my throat. So I knock that, knock her sword down, and cut the cut. And that's the technique. So we'll do the normal speed. Yay! There's a lot in that small brief moment that you would never catch. So we'll do this the slow version again. Step. She thinks we're going to cut together. I don't take a step. She takes advantage of it. I come in and it's a pushing sort of cut. It's a pushy feel. That's what I want. And then thinking, ah, now I've got her. But now she, has, but she can cut back. That's the kind of density that's in these forms, in, in all of it. With the two-person forms, we get to apply this against another person. Um, but there's layers and layers and layers. We'll do the tips of this for that. Um, so. Jude, the, uh, underneath all the saw brick is empty hand fighting. Slowly onto the other side. So as I come and be cut down, she comes in and notice the alignment between her hand and her foot. It's a really, really strong alignment. It's basically all skeleton. So even though she's much smaller than me, she's actually quite rigid in this position. If I push it down, all that happens is I push her back foot into the floor. I was trying to come in with uh, like a short sword attack, and I'm putting all my weight down there, so this suddenly getting this rigid thing happening, before I develop my power, puts a bit of a shock through my system. The shock is secure, or opening. So she takes advantage of that, she does a stylized yes. strike with a uh, short sword, severing the muscles that hold my, that connect my arm in. And then, does the take down. Yep. Okay. So there's, the other thing that's happening there is that she's having to move in to me. Now what she wants to do, her intuitive reaction is to run away or to stay over there because I'm a big guy coming at her full power. And you have to, we have to learn to break that natural reflex and to work at a closer distance. This is just as true with sword work as it is with um, empty hand. We'll do something so you'll see in a moment. Um, the other approach is to use my energy. We'll do uh, kind of so, in this case, I'm coming to punch at her. She's going to knock it and take a big circle. It threatens my elbow. I've got to follow around a threat because my elbow's under threat. She takes that big circle of energy and whips it into a smaller circle of energy on my wrist. This is going to break my wrist unless I, unless I respond to it. Then she takes the arm back to a big circle and forces me around there. 
to stop my elbow breaking again. The wrist locks hurt a lot more than you, uh, than they look like they do. This is a Naganada's repaired weapon. We figured this was the only, about the only one we can do in here without going into the height. So, we're going to we have to go really slowly. So, if, if nothing else, we'll just, um, we won't, we maybe won't even do it fast. So, I'm going to cut, I'm coming, he's, I've, Force him back to a kneeling position. I want to come in and finish him off by cutting to his hands, but before I get there, he's forcing me to block to my, to my leg. So I block that one. And then I think, I'll get the other side. No, I've got to block again. Damn, I've got to block all the time. I don't like blocking. And then I'm going to cut towards his head, slowly. That's it. And then he can come up. And he thinks he's got me, but I think I've got him because I've got the sword out. And in one movement, coming in to cut. And at this point, could someone go get the one with the scabbard? Yeah. Gary pulls out his, out his short sword, but as sometimes happens, the whole thing comes out. The sire comes out as well. Oh no, what's he going to do? It doesn't matter because my sword gets stuck in the sire and slice. Okay, let's, let's do that one. Oh, you can't size it, it's okay. Last bit before we we'll finish off with, uh, uh, with the box I'll go in. I'll talk through this because otherwise it's going to get rather messy, especially with the ceiling height. I was agreeing everybody gets me. Um, when applied, now we, don't, we wouldn't normally do much training like this in Japan. This is really a case of applying the, the knowledge in a, in a randomised situation. Um, so this is like, that's all goes. We'll just take it really, really slow. Applied, it is somewhat different. There's a formal <coughs> set which is the way it is, and it teaches, it teaches your state of mind as much as anything else. Japanese martial arts, traditional Japanese martial arts, are on a fundamental level an encoding of the state of mind through a physical movement. So. That's what they encode. And they teach your body stuff, and they teach you how to handle the sword. But when it comes to actually applying those techniques, it's only that very first movement that comes out. So, from here, if I've got this group of people attacking me, I know that there are certain, straight away certain places that I do want to be and don't want to be. There's one spot way over there, which is a long way away, and this one here is much closer. So I'm going to, this is an unusual shape of room. So the first thing I'm going to be doing, as they're moving towards me, is I'm going to be moving towards that spot, and I can see Gary's already moving towards his, his hand towards the sword, and he's getting closer, he's, he's, on, he's getting, beating me to my, the spot I want to be to, which means I have to modify the shape of my body more. And the modifying shape of your body has a habit of actually working in a weird kind of way. So now we're one down, and now I'm up, two, three, four, Give me a more randomised, slightly different, different scenario, so it's going to come out different. So, this time I'll be over here. 
you're moving, you're taking a step up, I'll take a step. So, can I come back? There's one, I've had to modify a lot. I've had to change shape of my body quite radically to get past there. Fortunately, Zandra is still out of range of me and my body. But from there, my hair, my skull's going to travel nicely into her hair, it's carrying on next step. Yeah, and I'm out of way of those ones. I've got to watch out for Josh's apples. Promise? Yeah. So there, so he's, he's half drawn. That's a good chance for me to get rid of him too. Yeah. Next step, next step. And I'm almost thinking, about can I get a sword from somewhere? It would be rather handy. Yeah, this <laughs> I am going to move away from these guys. I don't really like running away. I really should be getting closer. This is probably something that would be rather hard to do in, in real life because I'm talking it's going to be somewhat easier. I'd have to travel back. Next step. Can I get through? You can't train like that at, at, at high speed. We can go a little bit faster, but there's always the danger of somebody getting seriously mm. injured. So, that leaves us a bit of time for questions, and you can come and have a look at the stuff we've got. Questions? What's the tassel on your sword for? To annoy. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it literally is here to annoy. The original purpose was to, to show rank. Uh, some schools have dispensed with it completely. Uh, some schools tie it over here. Um, we, we flick it over the back, and it basically gets on the road. What you would use it for, you could take it off, and if I was fighting a duel, this is a kimono, I could use it to tie my sleeve back. I could use it to tie a prisoner up. I could use it for any one of those uses of string that you might normally have. <laughs> <laughs> it's a utility. Now, a lot of swords had, had, little, had little pocket knives in them as well. You said there was a, an assistance to the honourable suicide. I understand there's someone uh, behind them, a second who beheads them. Is that correct? Okay. Is there a special swing? Or? We missed it out because it's um, it's considered to be, uh, in Japan, it's considered to be in poor taste. Ah, oh, right. Yeah, that's but fair enough. Especially for you. I'm just. <laughs> poor taste. Okay, okay. I'm just. Yeah. Fortunately, we have a few Japanese people, you'll forgive us for doing something in horrible taste. But, how it works is, I'm the, the, I have the sword that's going to do the business here, which may have no hilt on it. It might be a straight sword wrapped in paper with paper at the handle, because we don't want to have a scenario whereby I decide at the last minute not to commit seppuku. And I take it out on Gary. He might be a friend of mine. He should be a friend of mine. But he has to be especially watchful because maybe I'll check it out. What they sometimes even did was they would do a rehearsal the day before, but the rehearsal would end up with my hair cut off. Uh -huh. <laughs> so, when he senses that I've reached the moment, assuming that I'm going to do it properly, because the real proper version, there's, there are various versions of Sepulchre as well. The, the real classic one is the one done by Sen no Rikyu, which is where you, um, he was a tea master, and he was accused uh, of doing something wrong, and he hadn't done it wrong. So to prove that he hadn't done it wrong, it was all just weird fabrication. He committed seppuku, he took a piece of his entrails out, put it on a plate, and sent it to his bunny. So, when he goes senses, that's the moment, the moment to come. I pick up the sword, and as soon as I go to cut it in, he's going to cut it. And he does have a special, I better go over the a special sword. His hand comes in and blocks just at the last minute so that the sword cuts through the spinal cord but not through the flesh. It's also a single handed cut, so it goes around the vertebrae. Whereas a double handed cut you might use for a criminal to literally behead them. But for, a, for an honourable person, you want to have it a bit more dignified, so you just cut through the back. Um, because of small spaces like this, uh, literally, because if you're training in a small place, it actually is handy to be able to practice without worrying about the ceiling height. Um, because it's good for getting your legs to move. Uh, because a lot of life in feudal Japan is lived on the ground. So not entirely. Um, Sekiguchi Sensei will actually teach all the techniques standing and kneeling. 
field seats, the standing ones seated, and the seated ones standing. So this, we, we do them all that way. But the usual way, we've, what we've done today is the normal way. It's, uh, if, you, if you want to take this further into Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu with groundwork, you'll find this, this has done good, good work on your legs and your balance on the ground, your ability to move on the ground. Um, often you end up in real fighting situations on the kneel, in kneeling position. You can't avoid that. If, you're, if you make a decision that you're not going to kneel down, it will go bad for you. If you're, because fundamentally, um, in any fighting situation, it's the other person that determines what happens. Because the other, because if you're, if, just thinking in terms of contemporary street fights, someone's not going to pick a fight with you unless either they, have, they feel they have more skill, or they're bigger, or they're crazy. They either figure they've got the odds on their side, and they can beat you up, or they're crazy. In neither situation is this good for you, because either they actually are bigger and stronger, and this is, it's, no matter how much skill you've got, it's not nice to deal with somebody bigger and stronger than you. Or they're crazy, and that's not good to deal with either. <laughs> and you have, to be, you have to respond to them. You can't do it so that I'm going to make the fight go the way I want it to go. And one aspect of that is, if I'm prepared to kneel down, if I'm prepared to do whatever it takes, I'm far more likely to win than if I just decide. The only way I can really demonstrate this properly, it, you, you don't get this in, in one hit. If we did this a series of random encounters, and I, I successfully managed to try and do a technique, let's see what happens. I'm trying to yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know whether this is going to work. This might, this might not work at all. So if she's going to attack me some random way, I'm going to do Nika. Nika didn't work. She punched me in the face first. I've got this here. Because she's being nice, it's a demonstration. She'd probably let me do it. But I didn't really work with her. She's going to give me something else. I have to, you have to flow with the other person. And if I'm not prepared to kneel down, it's a really big problem. If I'm not prepared to adapt to the other person. So doing a lot of kneeling work makes you, on some sort of weird emotional level, more able to blend, to work with the other person. It's that kind of, see that's what I like about martial arts. I want a martial art where, the, the form I did at the start, the one with the, the, the one that's the, the, the demon sweeping one, a form like that builds a sense of authority, builds a sense of getting up on Monday morning and facing work with the right foot forward, it builds a sense of, in a business meeting, putting my case forward in the right way. And I can use that in everyday life. And using an adaptability, a sense of being adaptable to what the other person is doing, I can use that in everyday life. I can use that in a business meeting. I can use that in a non-violent um, conflict situation. Like an, an argument about a business deal, if I can suddenly let the other person if I can see it, if I can not fight them force against force, but try and work out what they want, see things from their point of view, I can nullify the conflict much easier. In an encounter with a with a drunk who wants to beat me up, um, you know, at two o'clock in the morning on on uh, George Street, if I can get into what the drunk's mindset is, I can turn the conflict into something which doesn't end up in a fight. And if it's a sword fight, it's the same thing. So I want martial arts that I can use without having to do martial arts, without conflict. But I can actually put them to everyday use for 21st century life. That seems like a good place to wrap up. We're more on time too. So please join me in thanking Phil Davison and the good evening stage. Thank you. Thank you to talk to an attentive, interested audience. <laughs> Um, there'll be tea and coffee here very shortly, so um, help yourself, and we'll start the Kendo presentation at about.